Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today for the new features update webinar. Um, hopefully you're seeing my screen. I'm getting a connection unstable message, but hopefully everybody's still seeing me and hearing me. Um, yep, so far. But OK, great. Um, I'm going to start off with an apology. 127 has not released yet. Um, and yeah, just extenuating circumstances. It had a lot going on last week when we were trying to shut down development and, um, you know, try to get it tested for you guys. And then, um, yeah, just still playing catch up this week. So, um we're hoping still this afternoon but uh, most real more realistically tomorrow morning so you know wait till about mid-morning tomorrow and try to download it and you should be fine um you can always do the check for updates to see when um you know that's from the tools menu check for updates uh or not tools here let's just go to it Student manager under help, check for newer version. When that says, yes, there's a new version, um, then you can download it. So, and also, on with the show. On the, um... uh, one of the things. Oh, sorry, Matthew. I was just saying if you're on the constant, our, our email list, you should get that notification when we finally put it out as well. Excellent point. Uh, so one of the first features we've got in is the, uh, uh, for those of you that are using SMS uh, feature, we have it to where templates can support the pound pound uh, functionality like emails. So you can encode them with the pound pounds and, and not have to mess with the quote plus quote whatever um, type stuff. So that should help with creating your templates. Email to instructors when the enrollment falls below minimum. Uh, this is the uh, should be able to help you if you're already taking advantage of the when the minimum is met. Um, you know, the instructor gets a notification. Hey, the minimum has been met. Yeah. The course is ago. I notified that it's you know somebody canceled, and now that now maybe the course won't go unless somebody else signs up. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we've we've added this ability in Student Manager as of one twenty five, so that is available now. Hybrid courses, a little bit of a change. Before you'd have to do a little bit of math in order to figure out the virtual maximum. Uh, this is uh, in this example, the course maximum is 50, physical maximum of 20, so 30 left for uh, the maximum, and then also be able to display exactly the or the current count of virtual in addition to physical. Uh, and again, don't have to do that math yourselves. Uh, paid membership requirement. This is a new requisite that you can put in your preferences. And it's just there at the bottom of the course preferences on the left side. Require memberships to be paid before allowing usage. Uh, this, is a lot, this ensures that, you know, you've got your students aren't just taking advantage of you, your good graces of allowing them to be billed for a membership or something. But yeah, they actually have to pay before they actually can use those benefits. So that uh, should help you guys out. And cancel course routine from the menu. Uh, there is now this question that comes up. Uh, so you're canceling the course. Email people about the cancellation. Uh, we some they wanted to type their own list of who 
to uh, email to. And so I made sure to include that option. But usually I would think instructors would need to know. The persons to notify would need to know if you want to do both those or one group uh, only. Uh, there's options for that. So uh, that should help you guys there. Attendance for workshops. This has been a long time coming. So it used to be that for workshop attendance, or it, well, it wasn't specifically for workshop. It was for the workshop course. It would just be per day. So Michael Boyd there would only have the 1127, 1128, 1129 entries. So just three entries. But here now it's listing every single workshop that he is in. And he's got three workshops, the 27th, two on the 28th, two on grade code module, whatever you need to also track with that. Uh, off to the right, it actually shows those uh, workshop codes um, so that you can reference that as you need to. Uh, filter paid um, in the mass change update delete archive area. This was more intended for make sure to only have courses that were fully paid before archiving it. But I got to thinking, you know, maybe you want to keep them active if they're, you know, if they've got unpaid, um, something like that, or, well, probably the published doesn't really matter, but locking the course, definitely want it all paid before locking it down. Um, I don't know. That's up to you guys. Um, but anyway, I thought there'd be just more than the archive where you would want to use that. And that's highlighted down there as to whether you want all courses just fully paid only or the uh, unpaid only when uh, choosing your criteria down there. Uh, restrict enrollment by age. Uh, this was what... Uh, uh, well, uh, comes to my mind is is like wine tasting classes or the beer, uh, you know, making beer. You want 21 or older. Uh, I could see kids camps where you have, you know, they have to have a minimum age to get into the different kids camps. Um, you could you could set that in here as well. Uh. One thing it will do from student manager is when you enroll somebody, if they don't have a birth date on the name screen, it will prompt you to fill in their birth date. And then it'll do the check of making sure that the uh, the age uh, requirement is met. If um, Also, if you are entering that um, birth date from that little input screen that comes up, it, it will save that to the name record for you so that you don't have, if, you know, assuming there's a bunch of courses they're enrolling in that haven't uh, an age requirement, it's not going to prompt you every single time. So uh, plus then you get to keep that demographic information for yourself. Room use logging. Uh, so this is behind the scenes, just kind of for your own information. Uh, we are going to start putting a created by, updated by, add date and update date on room use items. Um, this is purely for, um, you know, tracking purposes, see who's making those changes, who's creating these records and, um, you know, maybe what's going, you know, if there is something going wrong, we can hopefully track down this a little better. Logging in general, we've made some changes. Um, there's going to be more details logged, um, not quite to the ability, you know, the uh, extreme level that Ace Web is, but still more than what we have been in Student Manager. Um, this is more for our, you know, being able to track down what goes wrong. Um, you know, this, you know this 
some data gets in there that's that's not kosher with SQL Server or not not right in VFP. We want to see what what's going on there. Uh, some of the existing logging we've also done some upgrades to enhancements to uh, should be faster uh, than it has been. However, because we are logging more, this will be a little bit of a performance hit. But this is already, I've already found like two problems with this new logging that I wouldn't have been able to find without it. It has been already been worth it uh, since releasing in 126. Um, and actually it was in one of the items was in in our testing for the release of 126 and and uh, Cheryl already had it in her system um, that I was able to get a good log of what exactly went wrong. So uh, this this has helped us in that respect. Um, also, I've been working in general to make the program faster, a little bit on um, some of the SQL statements have been around forever that have, haven't been running the fastest. Those queries just, just aren't the greatest. Um, so I would see, I would think you would see this primarily in reporting. Um, I'm hoping to have reports run faster in general. Of course, if there's, you know, thousands of registrations and payments being shown on a report and there's a whole bunch of calculations with that, then that's not going to be the speediest anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping in general, some faster stuff. Uh, I would say though, about 70 to 80% of these performance enhancements have been geared toward the SQL server stuff. Um, and that's been primarily because of the SQL statements when I first wrote them. Um, you know, I was doing a lot of converting Visual Fox Pro code to SQL Server. Those queries, yeah, I left them with the uh, SQL, uh, with the Visual Fox Pro syntax for the uh, uh, indexes. So changing up those to hit those SQL Server indexes is going to help quite a bit. So. In general, 126 and even 127, because I've still been working on it. Heck, I was even working on it back in 125 with some of the functions. But um, it, these builds, these releases should be faster in general, uh, even with this logging uh, going on. But, um, or maybe it may, some screens, it may just be about the same. It may be a wash. But uh, hopefully I'm, I'm hoping you guys will find it faster in general. Uh, instructor fax and pager. This, um, on the name screen, we've allowed you guys to relabel those, get rid of the phone formatting, and be so you could use it as another UDF, basically. Uh, so basically, we've made that same changes on the instructor screen. Uh, give you a little bit more room there unlimited instructor udfs do i need to say anything more than that i mean just another area to give you more udfs yay uh did have to add the new function for it add i n u n l which is just like the other areas uh for name course and registration unlimited udfs um so yeah, you can show these on reports too. So uh, expire escrow payments. This is the new thing. This is um, one of the things that's holding us up a little bit because uh, apparently uh, between me getting it working and then getting it to Cheryl for testing, it broke. Um, so uh, trying to get that right. Um, but yeah, we, we basically the idea is you can have a preference. Um, I can show those real quick. Might as well. Come on, student manager. Where'd you go? There you go. Edit preferences. So over here on the pay screen, 
it's um, uh, right down here, expire escrow. You can set a number of days, maybe 90 days. I don't know, maybe 365. Have it just the year. You can set it to be after the payday or after the date of the cancellation. Uh, that's today. So you can do that uh, whichever way you want to go with that and be able to set those. And then when the registration um, is, or when the payment is moved to escrow, this date is put on the payment screen. You can go and change that manually if you want to, if you want to adjust that for somebody, maybe um, the, you're giving them a little bit extra grace period, or maybe you're not happy with them and want to cut that down a little bit maybe this is the umpteenth time we've moved these funds to escrow and you want to make sure they use it not in a year but in 180 days or something i don't know whatever you want to do but you can change it um so yeah that's where we're going with that um and i'm actually going to talk about it again here in a little bit but any questions so far these are all student manager changes i've showed so far uh susan that's question. you any yeah. questions no no there is no questions but i have one with the expiring of escrow okay. that means um instead of having to go through and zap the charges later it will automatically expire those for you Right, exactly. That's Yay. the whole idea. Perfect. Yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions, so uh, yeah. I think you're good to go. Cool. We'll get into Ace Web stuff then. Uh, Ace Web, the gift cards have were showing on the account status, and you guys have pointed out, hey, that's not a, really a course that should be showing on account status. So uh, that was just simple change in in the query to on uh showing those account status pages so uh removed removed the gift card course attendance for workshops so in student manager we have it so why not add it to a web uh the instructor access page so when they're putting attendance in from the instructor access it's now showing breakdown on workshops. And speaking of which, right now, student manager is set to create attendance right when the student registers. So Ace Web also needs to do that too. Um, and that way you don't have to keep hitting that create attendance on the course. Um, so yeah, that's part of one of the other changes with Ace Web. Uh, which we're probably, well, yeah, with the student manager delay and getting out, we're uh, hopefully we'll get to testing Ace Web stuff uh, this week. So it's probably going to be the end of next week before we'll have it ready. Um, maybe the week after that, although I'd really like it to be out a few days before both Stein and I take off for Arizona. So um, yeah, we're hopefully you're going to have testing on that done. But anyway, uh, coming soon. Require memberships to be paid. So the, the same student manager setting in uh, uh, needed also to have a INI setting in AceWeb to do the same thing. Um, not sure why you would want the different areas doing different things. So yeah, probably want to set that in student manager and in ACE web, but uh, yeah, needed to have an extra control to, to do that. Notify instructors when course falls below the minimum. So this is again, mimicking the thing I've added in student manager, also did it over in ACE web. This is though more in the cancel reg routine. If you guys are utilizing that, so that way, when uh, somebody goes and cancels, um, then then this notification can fire from out of there. And oh, I forgot what template we put this in. Or if yeah, oh yeah, we pulled it from the student manager. You can um, um, 
the template pulls from student manager. So this don't have to have a separate template for Aceweb. Yippee, woohoo, I forgot about that. Uh, pay with gift card on Quick Pick. This was all Cheryl. This had nothing to do with Steiner I. Cheryl did it. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, so yeah, I think it was, I don't remember if JavaScript, she had to do that with JavaScript or what. Um, but anyway, was able to make the change. And so the gift card feature with regular stuff can now be used with Quick Pick. By the way, if you don't have that module, I would consider that to be a very good investment, guys. Get that module. Get with Sharon when she gets back from vacation or get with Susan on a quote for it. Because, hey, that's a good play. Good thing to have. Are you talking about the and gift card module or the quick pick module? Gift card. <laughs> okay. Gift card the module. Clarification. Quick pick is a beast all to itself. I don't know. that. That's more, you know, the Ollie people. Definitely big advantages for them. Um, if you guys do a lot with memberships, definitely Quick Pick would help you, I think. But um, um, but yeah, no, I was more talking the gift card module. Getting that, that I think selling gift cards. Anyway, next thing on my list is exporting rosters as XLSX. We've been using the archaic XLS format forever. Um, I went and updated that. This is just on exporting rosters. So your students, when they're, or the, not students, instructors, when they're downloading those rosters in uh, Excel format, it's going to use the modern Excel. So no more warnings about, hey, this old version, blah, blah, blah. I've got to interrupt you really quick here, Matthew. We had a couple of questions come through regarding uh, Ollie and Quick Pick. Maxi asks, if we have Ollie using Quick Pick, would you recommend the setting on or off? I'm uh, guessing for the gift cards, since that's what we were just talking about. Um, well, I mean, yeah, it depends on if you're wanting to use gift cards. Yeah. Oh, the um... INA, INI setting for required page. Sorry. For requiring the payment for the membership. Oh, um, um, I think Quick Pick has its own version of that. Anyway, it, this is just more for general courses in in general. So, um, because well, a lot of a lot of times people are buying the membership at the same time. So yeah, it's it's um i would think you would want to use it but i don't know it's some people out there have allowed people to bill the membership and they're perfectly fine with getting the money down the road and so that's that's up to them so it's whatever your policy you want it to be um but yeah i would say use it use that new feature that's why we did it so what other you said there was another question? Oh no, she uh, she had comments that they use um QuickBook for their kids' camps as well. Mm. So Ollie and yeah, kids camps. Another, another good way to use it. Cool. Uh restricting enrollment by age. Again, another feature that uh was implemented in student manager. We've copied over to Ace Web. Um again, you know, just so you could reuse it uh on the Ace Web courses. Um and be be able to make sure to get those uh restrictions in place all over the place. Uh get you UDF for unlimited instructor UDFs. We don't, you know, there's not instructors creating their own accounts so no need to capture unlimited udfs for instructors anywhere however you may want to display your unlimited instructor udfs so i've extended the get you udf function for that um so it's the same same way you use it for names registrations courses um Enable being able to show these 
on different pages wherever you're needing to show it. Maybe you've got uh, some information that needs to go out in, uh, uh, you know, even in the confirmation email or something. You can show that uh, instructor UDF there or you know, on the X course status page or, you know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be updated in help on how to use that exactly. But it's it, like I said, just like name and course and register. So okay. uh, the class. Oh, sorry. Okay, so. We did have another question. Uh, will the age requirement block anyone who is too young from joining the course when registering online? Yes. So that's the um, the restrict enrollment by age. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's why we added it to ACEWEB as well. So update to ACEWEB once we have that uh, update available. And I'm again, I'm hoping next week. Um, and then you'll have it registrations in both places. Any other questions? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Uh, the CLS teach function that has been in student manager for umpteen billion years. Uh, somebody's needed to use it for um, certificates on ACEWEB, you know, getting the, the self certificates on ACEWEB. So I've added that function over into ACEWeb. And with that, I had to also add the pay tote and the GT code two because they are dependencies inside of class teach. So now all three functions now exist um, over in ACEWeb. Uh, and it's the same parameters as what is in student manager. Um, I think the only difference is you can use class teach with the archive function um, in ACEWeb. That's not needed. So I yanked that part out. So uh, yeah, so there's nothing dealing with archive with it. So that's the only difference there. Um, but yeah, should give you guys some more things, more tools to utilize. This isn't just available in certificates or other reporting. You could use these functions basically anywhere, you know, on your um, templates or something. Maybe you want to show GT code do on your your uh, uh, office email or something. You know, how much how much have you guys? collected in dues on this course, uh, you could start showing that now. So more, more, don't limit yourself on what it can do because, hey, there's lots of things you can do with this. So, and then the expire escrow payments. So there's been a setting in ACEWeb called the escrow cutoff. And so with this new expire escrow payments in student in, in student manager, it's kind of like it kind of makes that escrow cutoff redundant. However, if you don't have it set in student manager, um, then that escrow cutoff is still going to be utilized. Otherwise, cancel reg um, when you are allowing somebody to cancel and the funds go to escrow, those manager preferences that I showed earlier carry over into Ace Web, yeah, into Ace Web automatically. So they don't, you don't have to turn on an INI or something with the same stuff. This is, it just carries over. So, um, yeah, so it should help you out there. Um, this, you don't need a full ACEWeb update for it. Just uh, get the new cancel reg when that, but we'll roll that out with the new ACEWeb anyway. So another good reason to update if you're wanting to take advantage of this expiring escrow payments uh, functionality. So any questions? I'm not seeing any new ones. 
I guess any ace with an advantage. Well, sweet. I think I'm done. You want to wrap this up? When oh, the new 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 webinar. There's another webinar. What uh, the on the nineteenth? Yes, thank you. Nineteenth. What was it called? It is called. <laughs> Or what are we doing for it? I don't. It's a webinar with Pro Train, um, I believe. Um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're going to um have Maxie on that talking about how she works with Pro Train and gets Pro Train and Student Manager all working together to help her program make some uh, extra funds. Excellent. Yeah. So we've got that pro train um, import to mm -hmm. allow you to to import those. Uh, uh, you, you have pro train, whatnot. So, yes, very good. All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions and Matthew's done, we'll let you guys have the rest of your time back. Um, uh. I hope you guys have a, a great rest of your afternoon.